if you're doing Alta Via 1 and you arrive to this area, that is completely different to where you started before and it's just unbelievable. You have a 360 degree amazing view, sunrise and sunset, don't miss them, it's incredible. Hello everybody, I've been living here in the Dolomites for 27 years and I started this company 12 years ago and the idea behind is for us to support the local community and work uh, with the environment and trying to give the best experience uh, locally and sustainable possible in the Dolomites. We have a team of around 100 guides that work all locally with us. We work with the uh, drivers, hoteliers, the refugios, everything is like, like a very big family all throughout the Dolomites. And we decided to start with the Alta Via 1 and then number 2. And that's what we're going to be talking today about the Dolomites and the Alta Via. This is a nice introduction about the Dolomites. Uh, it's a UNESCO Natural Heritage Site since 2009. So guys, if you come here, it's just unbelievable. You're going to be blown away by the beauty of these mountains. A perfect day. With friends this incredible vista and the sun that warms us. We feel the huge power of nature all around us. Immense, pristine, powerful, inviting with its clear, pure waters as we take in the majesty of the Dolomites, balancing the intensity of physical exertion with our heartbeat. In the end, it brings us peace of mind that this memory will always be with us. Unique moments carved into our hearts forever what made it such a special moment was not just the view, it was not just that we finally got there, it was actually the way we got there, placing our trust in the hands of expert mountain guides who made our path feel safe and easy, creating a wonderful team and an incredible bond. As we got to the top, the friendships we made will last a lifetime. What are we going to be covering today is about the Dolomites, where the location where they are, then obviously the Alta Via 1 and 2, and the, a little bit about the refugios, about the guides, and uh, Via Ferrata. These are some views of the Dolomites. Everywhere you go and wherever you walk, You'll see these mountains are just phenomenal. Dolomites is a, the rock is, it comes Dolomia, and that's how the name comes, Dolomiti, from Dolomia, that it was a French geologist who found this rock. The Via Ferrata, that means Iron Pass, they are all over the Dolomites, and a Via Ferrata can go, usually they're hooked on the rock wall, and you're traversing, you know, going straight or around, but always on the rock. One yeah. thing that you can do also in Alta Via 1 and 2 is maybe stay two nights and say, okay, I'm going to do the Alta Via one, but I have three more days and I would like to do a Via Ferrata. It could be organized that well, and this could be a private trip that you're doing the hike, the Alta Via one. And then in one of the refugios, you stay two nights. So the day you arrive, the second day you do a Via Ferrata with the guy. And that's an actual Via Ferrata with all the gear, everything. Ferrata goes, you know, from a hundred meters to 400 meters of cable all along the rock. The location of where we are in the Dolomites is in northern Italy and is three regions, Trentino Alto Adige, Veneto and Friuli. So all these three regions are in the Dolomites. So you have, in the north part, you have the South Tyrol, that is the German-Italian speaking um, province of the Dolomites. Then in the east, you have uh, the Trentino and then you have Veneto and Friuli. All of these mount all of these regions are all in the Dolomiti and when you do the hikes, the Alta Vias, you'll be seeing the difference of the people, the culture, the customs in the food, the wine, etc. So it's really cool 
when you come to hiking the Dolomites to spend, you know, a week or 10 days so you can get to experience this type of trip. The high roots of the Dolomites or the Alta Villa, high, Alta means high, is because you go, you always stay high up from 1500 meters and up and, just, and you go from hut to hut, from refugio to refugio. They go from north to south. We're gonna be talking about Alta Via one, that is this one that you see there, and Alta Via number two, that is a red one. The Alta Via number one is the most famous one and is very, very popular, has become really popular in the last years. That's why we decided also to let you know more about the Alta Via number two, and we're also doing a couple more. So if you don't find accommodation in one of the Alta Vias, you can go and do the other one. The Alta Via number one, you can do it in a week to 15 days. The best time to come is between from June to, I would say, end of September. It's a beautiful time to come because we're in the fall. Uh, the colors are changing. So you only not only have the green, but you have all the fall colors. There's less people. The atmosphere is, is incredible. I think the, the fall in the Dolomiti is, it would be my favorite uh, time to come. It goes from this lake that is called Lago di Brailles in South Tyrol. So it's the German Italian speaking to the Veneto towards Belluno. You go from 1500 to 2800 meters and you have incredible peaks like Santa Croce, Tofana, Marmolada, Dolomites, you have 12 valleys and they're all connected by these high routes. In the mountains, we talk more than miles, we talk about hours. You know, you have to consider that the Dolomites is rock and you're in the mountains, you're going up and you're going down, you're never going flat. So maybe you're doing, I don't know, five miles or seven kilometers and you're like saying, oh, this is, you know, this is nothing, but it takes you seven hours because the terrain is so, you know, uneven or a lot of elevation, rock, etc. So for us, we have all the, the itineraries with the time and the miles, but the miles, I wouldn't consider that. What you have to take in consideration is the time, two hours, four hours, etc. Alta Via 1 and 2, you have an average of between four and six hours. And in between the mountains, you have all these refugios. The refugios, they are perched on the top of the mountains and sometimes on the passes where you arrive. So sometimes you are hiking and you pass through a road, there's a refugio and then you keep on going. And here is a map of the Alta Villa and it tells you where it starts. That is in the north here from Lago di Brailles all the way down to uh, Belluno. The closest airport, because you're coming from different places, I saw. Um, the closest airport for entering into the Dolomiti is Venice. And you have also from Venice, you can go up and there is a public transportation or private transportation. Mostly all of the trails in the Dolomiti, you have this type of signs, the Alta Via number one, two, three, four, etc. They have also this number that is, would say the number of the Alta Via. There you have 77 kilometers. If you do seven to eight nights, you're gonna be doing an average of four to six hours per day. And this is some of the terrain in the Dolomites. You have a lot of rock as well as you have green. If you see this one, these guys are going down in between the mountains. Then they get to this little lake and then they keep on going on this wide trail that takes you up to an, a refugio that is called Refugio Lagazzoi. All this photo that you see is in the Alta Via number one. These are the mountains, uh, the mountain groups in Alta Via one, that is the Lagazzoi, Fanes, Pelmo. Lagazzoi is one of the most famous uh, refugios in the Dolomites because of the location. And here's a description of where you go every day, you know, from day one to day seven, from four hours to six hours a day. The refugios in Dolomiti, in the Alta Via number one, they are privately owned, mostly all of them that you stay and you have private accommodation and dormitory style. The, the only thing with the Alta Via number one that is so popular that now is very difficult to find accommodation. The only way to get up to this refugio is by hiking and on the owners can come up with a Jeep. And these are some of the views of the, the, the trails that you do in the Alta Via one. This is another refugio that is the refugio Le Fodara Vedla and it's owned also family owned. So the nice thing about staying in the refugios is that you get to meet the family. Sometimes the kids are there. There's people from all over the world. So you meet from Koreans, Canadians, North Americans, 
uh, British, Europeans, all over, and they're all staying in the refugios. And the nice thing is also, when you're hiking, you get to chat with all these people on the way, when you arrive to the refugio, you're having a beer and you meet people from all over the world, and you can talk, oh, I'm going here, I'm going there. So if you're a solo traveler, it's a very nice to, way to meet other people. This is another area that is called the Cinque Torri, and it goes through the Alta Via number one. And this area used to be the headquarters of the Italians during the First World War. So when you pass through this area doing uh, Alta Via number one, you're going to see a lot of trenches and tunnels from the war. And now all this area has been cleaned and fixed, and it's like an open air museum. This is the Refugio Lagazzoi that is 2,750 meters. The only way to get up here is hiking. There's also the funicula that takes up the food and people come in for the views. You have a 360 degree, amazing view, sunrise and sunset. Don't miss them. It's incredible. This mountain range is called Croda da Lago. This one is the Pelmo, Lastoni di Formin. All these ones you'll be hiking through. The Chiveta and Pelmo Massif. If you're doing Alta Via 1 on day 6, I'm pretty sure this 6 or day 7, you arrive to this area that is completely different to where you started before. And it's just unbelievable. And the refugio here, somewhere over there, there is that little refugio that you're there is only for 40 people and the views are incredible. That's why sometimes it's difficult to ha have accommodation because there's more and more people coming and you cannot find because there's very few refugios. Alta Via number two is harder than Alta Via one. For me, is my favorite. The weather can change. Refugios also are much simpler. You have the refugios privately owned as well as um, refugios that belong to the Italian Alpine Club. The difference between these two types of the refugios is that they're privately owned. You have the family there, the food is better, the, the cleanliness is better. Everything I think is a little bit better. The location sometimes of the privately owned refugios is beautiful. Sometimes it's not as nice as others. The, the ones of the Italian Alpine Club, they're Beautiful locations where they are, but they're much more simpler in terms of refugio, more dormitory style, etc. The Alta Via 2, it goes as high as 2,900 meters. The photo that you see in front of us is the Marmolada Glacier. What you see in front of us is a glacier that in winter we ski. When you do the Alta Via number 2, you traverse behind the Marmolada, but on the south face. So it's sheer rock. It's unbelievable the views and just hiking there. This is a refugio that is called Refugio Boe, as you can see, 2,873 people. It's 2,873 meters. And we have a lot of Koreans. I think these ones are from South Korea. The Alta Via number two starts in Bresanone or Brixen because it's South Tyrol, so they speak German and Italian, and ends up in Feltre. So when you're doing this Alta Via, you can also have this difference of uh, culture, customs, in the food and just talking with the people. And you, in Alta Via 2, you pass through 10 different mountain groups. Here's a map and how it starts from north, again, south. Alta Via 1 is right here. Alta Via 2 is this line and Alta Via 1 goes over here. If you want to do the Alta Via 2, again, like Alta Via 1 is around 15 days. And the highest peak in Alta Via 2 is 3,052 meters, that is a Pittsboy. And I would say Alta Via 2 is, yeah, pretty hard compared to Alta Via 1. But the views are incredible because you're always hiking on this moonscape, rock. So if you like the rock and all that, stay here. You have less green in Alta Via 1, you have a lot of green in Alta Via 2, you have much uh, more rugged and, and rocky like this. In all the high roots of the Dolomites, the terrain, the trails are very well maintained, as you can see here. In the Dolomites, we have, there's a lot of people, so what we try to do is keep maintained the, the area so everybody can enjoy it. From, we have a lot of families and kids to grown-ups, you know, 70 and 80 year old. And you see them all hiking all over the mountain. So that's quite nice too. This is another mountain range. And you have the Marmolada here. The refugios. And this is a refugio Costner in Alta Via number two. One thing that you can see here also, you just need, I would say to do like a 
usually like a week trip. In general, people come here for seven nights to 10 nights. Not everybody does the two week uh, whole Altavia one or two. So with a 35, 40 liter backpack, you have everything to do the trip. In all the refugios, you, you have to bring your uh, sheet sleeping bag, but then you have the food you can buy there. Sometimes I call it civilized hiking, no? It's not like where I grew up in, I grew up in Patagonia, that that is totally remote. Here is incredible for the views, for the experience, but you are in contact with nature, but it's also very uh, civilized in the way that you meet other people. You have these refugios that are incredible where you can stay and people is very friendly and they're all very helpful. This is another view of oh, the refugio Costner. This one, for example, the owners, or the, they call, they're called gestore because this one belongs to the Italian Alpine Club. And this couple, that is a Costner family, they have been running it for 30 years. Actually, last year, I think it was 30 years. And it has only 36 spaces to stay. And you have a couple of private rooms and the rest is dormitory. Uh, Christina, who's the one who runs it, she cooks in the refugio. And her husband is a mountain guide, Manuel, who's always climbing in the mountains with clients. The food in the Dolomites, as I was saying, you have the Trentino and Veneto and uh, South Tyrol. So you have that uh, type of mix of more Austrian. We have a lot of really good sweets and cakes and stuff like that, because a lot of the areas of the Dolomites used to be part of Austria. Before World War I, it used to be part of Austria. So we have all that Austrian influence. And then you have the, old, the Italian that is all blended in the culture and in the food. So it's very interesting when you come to try the different dishes here. This is on the rock wall that I was saying, Dolomia, that is incredible. And the colors keep on changing. Sunrise and sunsets. The photos that you see are spectacular, but if you see it personally, you're blown away. Whenever I travel and I come back and I see these mountains and I'm like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. So, so these are some, we have a lot of passes in the Dolomites that are called Forcella or Paso. So you're passing from one mountain range to the other. So these photos is for you to see the type of terrain. One thing that is very important because the terrain is quite rocky, you need to have good hiking shoes. They can be a high, you know, ankle support or even the lower, but the, the sole has to be a really good sole. Not the running Nike shoes, but the hiking shoes. And these cables that you see here, we have, as I was talking about, we have the Via Ferrata, that is the iron cables on the rock wall that you need all the gear and you can go with a guide or if you know how to rock climb, etc. You can do it on your own or you can do a couple of days with a guide and then keep on going on your own. But also we have some trails that are called Sentiro Atrezzato, and these are the trails. The photos that we're seeing is on Alta Via number two, when you're going up to a refugio that is called Refugio Pichadu, and the trail is quite difficult, I have to say. So you have to look at the terrain, and it's very, very rocky, and it's slippery, and that's why you use these cables to help yourself to go up. This is incredible. This valley is unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's in the Val Gardena. Actually, Val di Funes, this is called. There's postcards about this valley everywhere. And we have a lot of natural parks, like the Puets Otle, the Fanes, etc., all over the Dolomites. So when you're hiking in Alta Via 1 and 2, you go through all these parks. As we were talking about the Refugio, is a great experience. The Refugios in Dolomiti, they're considered the best in the Alps. They're very, very popular in the last years. They got very popular after COVID even more. So we don't have a lot of them and they're always quite full, I have to say, especially in Altavia 1. So that's why it's good to try other Altavias like number two that is a little bit less popular and is spectacular. And is a Refugio. They are charming, etc. but you have bunk beds, dormitory. If you have private room, the bedding and linen are provided. The hot showers, you have it all for everybody. And you have meals, breakfast, and dinner that are served in common, common dining areas, no? This is a typical breakfast in one of a, a refugios, a private refugio. And this guy here, his name is Luca. He's one of our hiking guides and he's great. He's right now with a group and he's from Friuli region, but he's been working in the Dolomites for seven years. And maybe you get to meet him along the way. Here's another guide. This guide is a We AGM guide. He's called, his name is Marco. 
And the We Are GM guides, they are the elite of the guiding world. And they are the guys who can take you also climbing or hardcore stuff. This is photos of the refugios inside. So they're very nice, charming, good atmosphere. So you feel like at home. And in the evenings, you get to meet people. And this is what happens. You can see all the, in the maps, you have the name, the numbers of the, of the trails. You also have the number, it would be the number one for Altavia one or number two for Altavia two. So they're very well um, marked, I would say, the trails in the Dolomiti. And this is about the mountain guys, we are GM guys, professional mountain guys, that we have uh, around 100 of them working with us. And as I was talking about the shoes, lightweight or midweight, waterproof, hiking boots with ankle support, or if you don't, if you're used to hiking with no ankle support, it's good. But the running shoes are not so good. And then here for you to see is what we have for this year, the confirmed departures. I think the September 17th is pretty full. The 27th, we have some still some space. We have available others, best of Altavia number one and Alta two on request with the dates. And the dates, they go from June until the end of September. Well, thank you so much. And I hope uh, it was helpful and you learned a little bit about this part of the world that is amazing. And we hope to see you soon.